Hey there, and welcome back to Holden Modified, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today, we are going to be looking at an upgrade to the 1200. Now, I currently have the 1200 plugged into an old school 4x3, 17-inch uh, Dell monitor via VGA. And you may be wondering how I'm doing that. Am I using the 23-pin to VGA and then using the Amiga 1200's um, double NTSC mode? Well, the answer would be no. This 1200 has a modern solution on it, right? The Scan Plus AGA, which gives me a VGA compatible uh, signal, but it does not flicker fix it. it. It does give you the ability to boot from a, a floppy and have a nice VGA compatible signal. It allows you to play all your Amiga games and all your Amiga modes, and it'll work with a standard VGA panel. Again, it's not flicker fix. So what are we gonna do to try and solve this flicker fixer issue on the 1200? Well, enter Indivision. They have the Mark III version of their flicker fixer for the 1200. And this little lovely guy here, uh, much like the Scan Plus, jumps onto your chip, and then you get the option of HDMI out or VGA out. I'm gonna be using VGA because I like the classic look of the 4x3 17 inch VGA look. And this will give me the nice clean signal. Now, yes, using the software that comes with this, uh, you can actually get audio out of the HDMI as well. Uh, they give you this other little vampire like suction cup chip here that goes on to the other chip on the board so that you can control this in Workbench. Then it allows you to use the keyboard to uh, make adjustments to the setting. So let's go ahead and shut this 1200 down get out the old Scan Plus AGA and start working on getting this one installed. This computer will rule the world. All right, so the first thing I need to do is get this old one out. And unfortunately I've uh, secured the screws that hold the floppy drive in and that goes through, so I can't just pop this off. You know, I've done videos before, you just see me pop the top off the 1200 um, or my 500, and I just can't do that here because I needed to secure the floppy drive with the screws underneath, and unfortunately those go into the top of the case here. And flipping it over, once again, you can see the lovely uh, 3D printed vented trap door I got from Chris Edwards. That looks great. Go ahead and remove these screws. All right, so now I've gotten all the screws out, we can just pop this off. There's some clips in there, there we go. And off she goes, just kind of flip her back like that. And then very carefully and slowly, mind the ribbon of the keyboard, just kind of gently set it back up there. Having something to rest this against is very, very handy and recommended. Okay, so now we're inside and you can see the Scan Plus AJ and all of its goings-ons and my compact flash drive here that's so expertly installed with its electrical tape there. Let's kind of flip that off to the side. So yeah, the Scan Plus AGA has this ribbon cable that goes off to the little door off to the side for the VGA and I'll put the new one there too. But then yeah, it has the, the chips here that jump onto the Alice and then jump onto uh, whatever the heck this is. That would be the Lisa chip, you dummy. It seems scary, the noises these make when they come off, but actually they kind of came on and off pretty well. And yes, I put these little heat sinks on there. So yeah, I'm going to need to remove this uh, floppy as well, because it's uh, covering up the cable for the VGA output. There we go. Technology makes removal of things always easier. How about that? And now we have our individual computers. Uh, make your 1200 not flicker thing. Yay, Mark III. All right, so they make the short manual, which is for people that are completely impatient, like me, that tries to give you the quick and dirty way to put this in here. You know, that's, that's very much me. They also give you the same manual in funny language. So yay, you get funny language version and you get uh, English. It's basically saying, put the, uh, put the brown thing on the Lisa chip. So there's our Lisa chip right here. So let's do that. 
Is there anything in here that's going to conflict that I have or own? I don't see anything. Wow, that's a. It's not. Um, oh, there it goes. I was going to say that didn't feel tight, but yeah, it is. It, oh, nope, that just popped right off. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. Press down in the middle. So yeah, it uh, it it wanted to pop. I thought it was on there because I did kind of like a corners press like this, but then it just kind of popped off back off. So I gave it another press and then went straight down the middle like this until I hear no creaking or shimmying sounds. And then yeah, my compact flash should just lay on top of it with its amazing electrical tape. And then you've got the course the little duder that the little guy that goes out that port now they don't really give you a 3d printed dingus for it but i have the 3d printed dingus from the other one so i can transfer it yay so this this thing here needs to get placed uh on the cia adapter it's the uh well this is the cia adapter it needs to get placed on u7 of the a1200 all right, so I went online and found some pictures, and yes, right to the right of the keyboard port is U7. And the orientation of this connector is this little pin header up here needs to come go this way. So kind of put it on there and pop it on. It'll try to pop itself off. Keep pushing until it goes click and you poke holes in your fingers and bleed everywhere. There you go, okay. Make sure it's not interfering with our keyboard guy. So one issue I see right away is that this chip design is sticking out like maybe a millimeter, half a millimeter, and it's making it difficult to pull up the ribbon cable connector. So that is a little bit of a bummer. Um, you want to be very careful with this. You don't really want to apply leverage or pry anything over here. So I'm going to have to be really fiddly with this and you will too. In fact, you may want to actually pop this off, put your ribbon back in and then very carefully put this on so that you're not crushing or clipping anything in here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop this off, bring this up to proper connection mode. All right. So now we've got our keyboard and now I am going to place this back on and very carefully squish and click. So yeah, that's definitely the routine you want to do for this. You're gonna to wanna to install the ribbon cable first and press that down and then put that adapter on. Okay, so we're gonna close her up and then we're going to very carefully start connecting wires and things back there. All right, so now we are powering up the hard drive is seeking on the 1200, that's good. And then the manual here does actually tell you what the keyboard commands are to control this thing. So let me uh, get to that section. Well, I don't see anything right now, so that's a good sign. Unexpected, because that's usually how things operate for me. Yeah, that's right. So everything is booted up now on the 1200 and we're not seeing an image. So we're gonna go ahead and shut down and make sure everything is still connected. All right, so I've got the 1200 open again, or I'm kind of double checking things. I mean, as some of you folks may know who watch my channel or have taken the time to go back through and look at my other videos, I have kind of a history with individual computers and their products. Uh, Buddha, <coughs> Buddha IDE. <clears throat> so uh, just making sure here, everything is, everything is plugged in. Everything's nice and tight. There's no, there's no play or anything in any of the chips. I am verified that I'm on all the correct sockets and chips. Everything's tight, plugged in. This is nice and tight. There's no, whoop, oh, that's how tight it was. I'm pushing the whole system. None of these are loose or weird. One of the things I've noticed just from checking online is that I should see pretty quickly, I should see an Indivision screen show up on my VGA monitor pretty quickly when you turn this on. So when it turns on, you should see this kind of like the HDMI to uh, RGB to HDMIs. You should see a little overlay on the screen pretty quickly that tells you what the Indivision's doing even before you get into the, the 1200 being booted. That's a little bit interesting. Go through here and do the obvious things. Power save mode, right? 
Let's turn it on and off again. Sometimes it's the simple things. It's not detecting anything signal wise. I mean, it's getting nothing. That's a bummer. All right, I'm back again here and I performed a reseat of the Indivision Mark III to make sure it was truly clicked in and happy. Well, um, I'm going to have to do some research online. This is starting to be very familiar. Uh, ran into this with the Buddha and that became a giant adventure and I had to send that card back and forth to a couple people to try and get it working and we ultimately never did get it working. Uh, I was kind of hoping that wouldn't be the case with this. This seemed to be pretty straightforward. It just clicks onto the chip and uh, off you go. All right, well, let me uh, see if I can do some more research. If I find more research and it works, then I'll go ahead and we'll look at that next. Otherwise, thanks for watching <laughs> and I'll, I'll see you with an update video on this. Well, hello, we are back. And uh, I promised you if I came back, it would be because I would have a solution, right? So as you can see, we are now seeing an image on the VGA monitor, yay! And I will say it looks very similar to the Scan Plus AGA output, uh, with the exception of guess what? It's not flickering, there's no interlace flicker. It's super, super clean. How did you get it to work, Q? It wasn't working and you sounded very depressed. It was an interesting challenge. <laughs> so I, of course, I went over to the forums and I saw that other users were having the same exact problem as me. Uh, they would get the system installed, turn it on, and it was a blank screen, no signal. And then there's a rescue disk. So you go to the, um, unfortunately not in the same location as the forums, you have to go to an, another website by iComp, which is their wiki. And again, all of this stuff I'm talking about, where to download files and whatnot, these are all gonna be in the description below. So just look down below in the description and you'll have links for all this stuff. But there is a program you need to download. It's this config tool. There's also a rescue disk image, uh, ADF. So you can download an ADF and then you can just make the boot floppy yourself. And that's what I did. So I stick this boot floppy in with the rescue um, data on it and it boots up. And sure enough, it detected the Mark III and it automatically started flashing it with the latest firmware. Well, the latest firmware comes with the rescue disk as long as you're you know, downloading the latest rescue disk. And of course, that's what I did. It updated the firmware and then I went ahead and did a soft reboot. And when it came back, uh, it worked. I ran the config tool here and it didn't, it, it detected it. It didn't complain and say, cannot see card. It actually just it did what it just did now. It, it detects it. And I was able to explore the modes. And again, like I said, I picked a 800 by 600 VG mode. And then the test mode is uh, NTSC high res lace. So, but I'm got it in auto res right now. So you can see how it's off to the side here. You can adjust it with these values in here. It's kind of self-explanatory, um, but there's also another way to adjust how things appear on the screen. I'll get to that in a second, but more importantly, it was working. I was like, good, we're, we're working. Um, don't seem to have any problems. Good. And yeah, I, this, this VGA mode called uh, 800 by 600 auto plus VSync seems to work well for my needs. I did mess with some of these other ones and experimented, but this ultimately seemed to be the one that worked the best. It allowed me to use Workbench. Uh, it allows me to use uh, low res and high res Amiga screens, and it allows me to use the LightWave screens. So good, that mode worked for me. You may need a different mode. So I got really happy, everything was working, and I even rebooted and stuck in a, a game and it booted up and it worked. It was nice and, you know, Cool, no, no issues with VGA, despite it being an Amiga game running at 15 kilohertz, everything looked great. And then I turned the system off. And when I turned the system off and I turned the system back on, I was right back where I started. No! It did not detect the card, it wasn't there. If I plugged the Amiga native video output in down below the RGB 23 into another monitor and watch the Amiga 1200 boot, sure enough, it would boot. And I'd go over here and I'd try to run this config tool, and when I'd launch the config tool, it would say, can't find card. Don't, 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 there's no card in the system, can't find it. Okay, um, that's annoying. Went ahead and put the uh, rescue floppy back in, rebooted off the floppy, booted off the floppy. This time I did a control C to abort the flash update, because obviously it doesn't need it, because it's already done it. So I did a control C to abort that, and then after it was finished doing its little, okay, you've aborted the update, I then simply just did a, a, a soft reboot, ejected the floppy, and it booted up and boom, 
detects the card, shows the card, everything works. So what's going on? And just to make sure I wasn't crazy, I turned it off again, turned it back on for a cold reboot, and uh, or a cold boot, and once again, the card wasn't detected. So we're in this, obviously, there's some, something, is, something is on this rescue disk that's essentially initiating or initializing the card so that it works. Well, what's going on? Why, why isn't the card just initializing itself on boot like the, like the uh, Scan Plus AGA does, my old one? Don't know. There is a tool on here called Flash Tool, and that's the tool that it uses to detect the card and then update the firmware and do some other little housekeeping stuff. So we went ahead on a cold boot with no card detected, just executed the flash tool and, and to see what commands it had. And we looked at its startup sequence. And one of the things we saw was that flash tool has a command called info, and this queries the card. Well, when it queries the card, it initiates it or initializes it and kind of wakes it up. As soon as it did that, the card came to life and the VGA display turned on. Now with the VGA display on, this flash tool info command is triggering the card. It's kind of tickling it awake. Well, if that worked there, how can we get that to always work? <laughs> so we copied the flash tool to the hard drive on the, on the 1200, its command, its C folder, and then went to uh, user startup. I'll show you here. Actually, let me just talk about, let's actually show you. So if you go here, we went to shell, then we went to uh, user startup. And basically it's as soon as I could in the startup, it doesn't matter because it's the user startup, but I added flash tool, okay, space info. And that's it. That's the only thing I did, flash tool space info. Now that's gonna execute that command that we copied off the rescue floppy to our, our local hard drive. And upon doing that, that basically initializes or wakes up the card on boot. So when we cold boot this Amiga, once it hits the user startup, it will initialize the Mark III and we will get a screen. Okay, there's your solution. It works, sort of, yay. Now your next question will be, well, wait a minute. What if I cold boot my Amiga with a game disc or you know something else like Workbench 1.3 or whatever you wanna do, right? Something that doesn't have that user startup activated. Well, it's not gonna work because the card's not initiated. So until iComp updates the Indivision AGA Mark III's firmware to auto initialize itself, the workaround to use this product with um, non-Workbench or things where you can't boot into Workbench is to boot into Workbench so that you can get the card initialized and then you do a soft reboot and then you can stick in your, your Amiga game or whatever other disk you want and have it boot off the disk and it will work. The card will stay initialized because once it's been woken up, it stays on and you will have a nice stable output. But that is something you need to be aware of. So that's the solution for that, okay? Um, obviously, you more savvy folks out there could probably think of a cool way to make some kind of boot disk thing that maybe just does it for you no matter what's going on. But like I said, ideally or, or realistically or bestily, that's not even a word, uh, Indivision AGA needs to get updated so that it initializes itself no matter what. Because the Scan Plus AGA, of course, it doesn't need this kind of ridiculousness. It just always works. It turns on and it's initialized. So there's some kind of initialization phase missing in the Mark III, unfortunately, but at least there is a workaround and you can still play your old Amiga games on a nice flicker-free screen, on a, an old, on a nice VGA monitor and enjoy all the benefits. Uh, now, this doesn't just do VGA, it also does HDMI, but again, I only do VGA, uh, but I wanna let you know that if you do use the HDMI output, you're obviously gonna get a much cleaner image. Uh, you won't have all the weird scaling issues I'm having. The, HDMI image will look very similar to the RGB to HDMI type screen, which is a very clean screen, which I showed you in another video over on my Amiga 2500, which you can see over there with its pretty screen. If you wanna see that, you can check that video out. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, HDMI option is kind of neat because I am currently using the conventional analog jacks down on the 1200 to get my audio out. And that's what most people would do. But if you use the HDMI, if you go into the advanced option in this tool, um, I have mine set to pure DVI, no audio, but you can cycle through here and pick different audio modes, 48 kilohertz, 44.1, 96, 88.2, and save that. And now you're gonna get audio from your Amiga coming out through the HDMI. Well, that's pretty cool. That's kind of how people expect HDMI to work. So you have that option. Now, I don't know if that turns off the native output jacks on the 1200. 
I'm not sure. Again, I don't have the HDMI capability to test that, but that's where that's at. And again, this software I'm showing you here, this technically is not needed to run this product. This is solely for doing what I just showed you, which is tinkering with different uh, resolution modes, finding ones that fit for you. If you wanna do the HDMI audio, then yes, you absolutely need the software. And again, link in the description below to find the software. Um, but if you don't have the software installed and, and everything's working, well, how do you do any kind of configuration? Because what he does is he ships the product with kind of a default setup for uh, HDMI and VGA. And as I said, for most people that will work just fine. Because of my little light wave thing, it doesn't work for me. So if you get your system booted up and it works and you've got your VGA screen going, your HDMI screen going, but like everything slid to the left or slid to the right and your auto config and your monitor just doesn't work. Well, that's what the left shift, left control and pressing tilde all at the same time is for. And as soon as you do that, I'll say that again, and this is in the manual for the product, left shift, left control, tilde at the same time, this activates his live edit. And in this mode, when you move the mouse, it moves the screen around, okay? And it allows you to manually position the screen how you want with, within reason up to like a certain point. It's not perfect, but it allows you to kind of get it, you know, right where you want it. You can't like make it go all the way off to the screen, all off over here. I mean, it's got its limits and you can definitely freak it out. But this allows you to kind of center it up. Again, this is without any kind of software in the Amiga. This is just using the, the card itself to edit its own position on the screen. So you can kind of move this around and get it centered. And once you're done, you press tilde and that saves it. Now, once you've done that, when you launch, if you do have the software installed and you launch it, it's gonna say, hey, you, you did something in live mode. And you go, yeah, I did. And what you need to do is say, save and apply if you indeed want it to do what you did. Now, I don't want it to save and apply those live mode settings because I was just playing around. Uh, I have painstakingly adjusted my live mode to work with Lightwave so that when I launch Lightwave, it's centered and looks good and everything works. So I don't want to mess with that. But that's, that's the reason. So, I mean, do you need the software to use the card if it's, if it's indeed working for you? No, you don't. Uh, with the live mode edit, so you can you can position things around on the screen. But obviously you're gonna wanna use it because again, uh, there's all these different mode options. There's the ability to adjust the audio if you're using HDMI. There's, there's ways to do custom screen mode settings, which I had to do for Lightwave. This software is pretty important. Y you do kind of want it. You're gonna want to install it. So do download it. Um, probably create that rescue disk. In fact, until the, the firmware gets updated and fixes the initialization issue, you're gonna need to download the, the rescue disk and boot off it to get it to uh, wake up. So I hope that helps. This has been a, a little bit longer video than I wanted it to be, uh, a little more technical than I'm used to, to doing. I, I apologize if I'm not clear on everything, but I'll make links to posts uh, on the, um, in the description below you know, for what I found. Uh, on his forums and the post I actually put on his forums and of course links to the discs and the files to download. But overall, fun product, it is clean. It would be even cleaner in uh, HDMI obviously, but I'm weird and I like VGA. So now, finally, I will say thanks for watching and that was the InnoVision uh, AGA Mark III.